love I kept a dollar past sunset Always burn a hole in my pants Never made a school mama happy Never blew a second chance, oh no I need love to keep me happy I need love, baby, to keep me happy Baby, do you keep me happy? Baby, won't you keep me? Always took any from strangers Didn't wanna get me no trade Never wanna be like Papa Working for the boss every night and day I need love to keep me happy I need love, baby, won't you keep me happy? Baby, won't you keep me happy? Baby, won't you keep me happy? I need love to keep me happy. I need love to keep me happy, baby. Baby, won't you keep me happy? Never got a flash out of cocktails When I got some flesh off the bone Never got a lift out of digits When I can fly way back home I need love to keep me happy I need love to keep me happy, baby Baby, won't you keep me happy Baby, won't you keep me Baby, won't you keep me happy? Baby, won't you keep me happy? Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Happy by the Rolling Stones. It's one of my all-time favourite songs. It's a pretty complicated one to try and teach. Like with many Rolling Stones songs, there's lots of different layers going on. So I've kind of simplified it down to two guitar parts. Both are in open G tuning. Both have a capo at the fourth fret. One will be played without a slide and one will be played with a slide. Now, I think on the original recording, it's most likely Keith doing all all of the different parts there and he's doing slide in both parts or more than two. I think there's a three or four different slide parts that seem to kind of get all uh, layered on top of each other. But this way we have the first guitar part which is going to be mostly doing the rhythmy kind of parts. Okay, mostly strumming chords. I'm playing that one with a pick. So that one doesn't involve the slide. And the second guitar part is more of the lead liney parts. Uh, and that one's going to be used in slide. So let's go through the tuning quickly. A lot of people freak out over this kind of thing. So I'll take you through it right from the beginning. I'm back in standard tuning. First thing we want to do is tune the thinnest string down one tone. We can use the fourth string as a reference. Now we don't use the thicker string in this song, but I'd recommend that you drop that down to a D as well. So again, you can use the fourth string as a reference, and then you want to tune the fifth string down a tone. You can use the G string, which is the uh, third string. Uh, as a reference, so now you've got open G. Uh, not playing the thicker string, that's why Keith plays his famous uh, five-string telly, because you don't often need the uh, the thicker string, because it's not the root note. The root note is found on the, the fifth string. But what you'll often find when you put a capo on, changes the tuning ever so slightly. <laughs> Actually, it's not too bad. Sometimes it just needs a little tweak. I usually use my ear rather than a tuner for that, but if you want to use a tuner, the notes will be uh, F sharp, D sharp, B, F sharp, uh, B, 
<laughs> think about it for a second. And an F sharp again down there on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to take you through, first of all, the version that doesn't use a slide. I'm going to give you the basic framework of what's going on with the parts, a few of the details, and then I'll show you a few little embellishments that you might like to add in that I think I hear on the record, but I'm not 100% sure. All of these sort of stones things, they want to be loose. They kind of have to be loose if you're playing it that way. You're going to end up doing your own version. If you, I played in a Stones cover band for a long time, and we really went into a lot of the detail with these tunes. But it, it's a lot of work to be able to try and uh, cop a lot of the detail with the stone stuff. So I'd recommend more like learn the framework, learn a few embellishments, and then kind of put them in your own order as you feel it and learn to, to kind of loosen up when you're playing a tune like this. Uh, let's get to a close-up and start checking it out. Okay, so this is starting here, first finger barring the ninth fret, okay, except the thicker string. We're not playing the thicker string for this whole tune. If you want to take the thicker string off, you can go the full Keith Richards uh, vibe. Especially playing a Telecaster, you'll have the proper authenticity going on. Now, there's a couple of moves here. I think the main riff, like the general one, if you're playing it through the rest of the song, is this. I'm going to explain this first, and then I'm going to talk about a little quirk for the intro. So uh, to play this riff, we play the ninth fret, and then f uh, second finger goes down the tenth fret of the second string, third finger goes down the eleventh fret of the third string. Then third finger moves over to the fourth string, and then off. One and two, three, four. One, two, and three. And There's lots of little bits where it's kind of slightly muted hits. Again, you want to, you can choose to get into loads of detail with that if you want. One little detail that I think is interesting in the very intro is I don't hear this note in the intro. I just hear this. So he's just playing strings five, four, and three. Now. And then we've got this classic up, down. Okay, so it's leading in, it's kind of pushing it. Little up pick from the third string, and then the big down on the beat. And one, two. So it's one, two, three, and four. And this is ninth fret. First finger slides into it, just like we would do when we play it with the slide. It'll be exactly the same, but you put a slide on. I think the original version, like I said, is there's lots of versions of Keith doing the same riff with the slide on. I don't think there's a version on the record without the slide, but it's worth learning it if you're going to play it and keep it a, as simple as possible in one of the parts. So one, two, three, and four. Third string, second string, first string. One, two. Now this is interesting as well. I'm hearing this thinner strings first before I hear the low sound. So I think they're both up picks as well. That would be my best guess anyway. So one, two is down picks. Three and four and one and two. Three and four and one and two. Note here my thumb you might not re register straight away. I'm using my thumb to mute the thicker string. So I can do that second up pick and get, make sure I get the thicker, the fifth string without going. So I don't want that thicker string ringing out. So I'm using my thumb to catch that. So the very first time, one, two, So that intro, one and two, 
Now, that is kind of the, the most basic that I can get that, but again, you don't want it to be like tight and really regimented. It needs to feel loose. So if you don't quite do the same strums or you add an extra strum in or there's another note rings out, unless it's a real clanger, don't worry about it, okay? Try and learn it as a, as a framework and then loosen up within it. It's the only way I can describe it. If you're playing stone stuff, it's got to have that kind of loose feeling. It if you, if you get it too tight, it just doesn't kind of work right. So... A little bit of time on the intro would be, would be well spent, again, listening to the original recording. In the second guitar part, we're going to add the... A little bit more uh, in there, which really changes the, the feeling of the tune a little bit. So that'll do for part one for the intro. then we're into the verses. Now, I'd recommend, again, keeping it nice and simple for the verses to start off with. We're going to use the classic Keith trick. Uh, it's the open strings, and then first finger in the fifth fret of the second string, uh, second finger in the sixth fret of the fourth string. Classic Keith, Keith move again. So now... very classic kind of a blues move. M1 and 2, 3, 4, 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 M1 and 2, 3, You can keep it that simple. Now, I'm hearing lots of different layers and weaving going on, so there are a few little licks that you can add in there, even if you're just playing this kind of standard nose slide part. They are the kind of slide licks, but one of them... This one works really well, I think, so... so it's, almost, it's almost a bit tumbling dice. First finger uh, in the seventh fret, second finger in the eighth fret, and then just slide it down and release it. Here. Here, this is the eighth fret, fourth fret, sixth fret, and then open again. You can really experiment with that kind of thing. It's a, it's great practice, particularly for stone songs, to be able to just it literally try and play this. Keep it going. So you can just literally experiment. Just experimenting with those few moves, and <laughs> we got the tumbling dice intro. Okay, so it's all the same thing. These licks are they happen a lot in different Rolling Stones songs. So if you start to incorporate them, if you're singing, think about doing it in between. So uh, just need to get my lyrics up on the screen because I keep forgetting those first lyric lines. I don't know why. 
and it just fell off the screen. Yeah, yeah, I never kept a dollar past sunset. Such a cracking line. I don't know why I wasn't thinking of it. Anyway, but never kept a dollar past sunset. Always burn a hole in my pants. Never made a school mama happy. Never blew a second chance. No, no. Essentially back to the intro, but now we've got that um, definitely using the second finger. So the intro, this now I think pretty sure. I need love to keep me happy. I need love to keep me happy, baby. Actually, that's really the only bits that you need to be able to play that this part. Uh, if you want to play the original recording, the original arrangement, uh, after the second chorus, uh, there's a little slide guitar solo. Just beware, it's only five bars long, which is a little bit of an unusual amount of time for a solo. They're usually four, eight, 16, 12, whatever. Uh, but to have one that's five bars is a little bit weird. If you th I always think of it just as the melody. The do 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 I need love, and then we're back into another chorus. So I'm able to sing that melody in my musical imagination while I'm playing the song. So while it's, uh, it's gone, um, okay, baby, baby, won't you keep me happy? one part that if you're playing it in a band it's one thing that might be you might find a little bit sticky after yeah so after that little break there it goes back into a chorus and it goes straight back into another verse and then another chorus uh after that chorus it does another chorus progression but there's a slide solo over the chorus chords okay so be aware of that then it goes back into another chorus then the end part is uh very long and drawn out on the original uh drawn out in a, in a beautiful way uh on the original recording there's loads of different instruments horn sections come in it's uh, you know incredibly uh uh deep a lot of la different layers going on there which sounds amazing if you're playing it in a in a smaller group setting with just two guitars bass and drums that kind of thing then you probably want to maybe not to do the end part quite so long because it could uh, or you could turn it into a massive jam that would work as well okay i think that's enough for part one let's get stuck into the slide guitar part so for the slide guitar part i'm using this old fenix telecaster copy it's set up for slide guitar with really thick strings and a high action i've had this guitar a long time hardly in fact i haven't played it probably in 15 years 20 years ago when i was playing in a rolling stones tribute band this was actually the guitar that i used uh, i toured a lot with this thing uh yeah really thick strings helps with slide guitar so does the high action i find that using slide guitar on my other guitar with the low action just gets too rattly so you might want to find uh, a balance there on your regular guitar either uh, lifting up the action if you get into slide guitar or having uh, you know it's a great excuse to buy another guitar and setting it up specifically for slide with a high action um, I prefer these slides uh, shaped like this, it's called a Houlihan slide, uh, and it just means that you can flip it around and actually use your, be able to use your pinky a little bit and then flick it back over like that. But I've just got used to, I don't tend to do any of that jiggery pokery uh, these days, I just find it a little bit more comfortable for my hand. When I'm playing slide guitar, I nearly always play it finger style. It gives me a lot more control over the notes that are ringing out. It does mean that for the strummy sort of parts on this, I'm having to use my fingers, which maybe doesn't have quite as bright a sound as I might have ideally liked. Uh, maybe if I grew my nails a little bit better, I could get a little bit of that brightness back. But uh, you probably want to experiment with using your fingers for slide guitar because it does give you a hell of a lot more control than 
than doing it with a pick, like I said, but it does mean for the strummy parts, you're going to have to use your fingers. So your slide is going to have to go on the pinky because we need all of the other fingers to play the riff. It's exactly the same as the other part. The only difference, I think, particularly on the intro is he's having this down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay, so the rest of it's essentially the same. And again, on the original recording, the different guitars, like part one might do the da -da 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 one time and the other one does it another time. So it all just weaves together beautifully, especially if you're listening in stereo on headphones or whatever, you can really hear the everything kind of weaving is the, it's the only word I can think of to describe it really. Uh, it's quite beautiful. For the point of learning it, particularly on your own, I think it helps to separate them. So just have that one that's real simple, and then the other one. But you might decide that the two guitars are both playing with a slide, both doing this kind of thing and just weaving all of the way through. That would definitely work as well, and I think that would probably get you a closer to the original uh, recording uh, version if you went that way. So, uh, But for now, we're going to have... So the very first time the other guitar goes. You're going to come in. So. Still it's just the slides going down the ninth fret. Don't forget to mute behind the slide with the other fingers as well. Okay, you don't want to get into this habit of going. Because then you get these notes ring out as well. The notes behind the slide. You, you, they get, you get most of the note from this side. You don't, they're the notes that you don't want. Okay, so you cover. Okay, so. Two. Again, now I'm using my first finger, dragging up from the second string, and then up again. One, two, three, and four, and one, two. And this time, I'm playing the thinner strings, first finger, just an up strum, and then from about the G string. What I've, I think is going to be the only way I'm going to be able, able to teach this part properly is to give you some of the licks that I think are being played and then you can choose uh, which ones you put in what order because there's not really any set pattern that I've managed to, to decipher from the original recording. I have pulled out a couple of the, a couple of the licks that I feel like a part of the character of the song, so I'll show you those as well. But the basic idea is just finding cool little ideas that you can use in Open G with a slide. So I'm going to try and that's how I'm going to show it to you anyway. So the first lick that happens a, a few times is. So this is sliding up to the eighth fret, then the op uh, well, open fourth fret, fourth fret, and then ninth fret on the fourth string. That's eighth fret on the fifth string, open on the fourth string, open, sorry, fourth fret, fourth fret, and then it's the same note, ninth fret on the fourth string. And it's again why fingers are so much more useful with sly guitar. Because you can mute, um, you can mute the other strings. I've got a whole lesson on slide guitar and how this finger muting thing works. If you're completely new to slide guitar, you probably want to go and check out that slide guitar introduction lesson. It'll make a lot more sense of how you're going to play this. So, and another nice one. It's the third fret. Sorry, three frets above the capo, which is the seventh fret down to sixth fret open. 
there's definitely a few of those in there. So let's just put a couple of those little licks in so you see it. Now, I wouldn't normally do as much of the riff. I'd be thinking just more of the, 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 the slide ideas, but I'm going to try and put in some of this old riff as well, just so you've got some kind of context. But uh, so, never kept a dark sunset. to the regular Keep me happy, baby. Now this time that's a very obvious line in that second verse. which is uh, the ninth fret on the second string, down to the seventh fret, eighth fret on the third string, to the sixth fret off. I'm sort of struggling there with the capo, getting in the to develop my work on my own technique slide guitar I haven't played slide guitar for ages but I've got to be honest uh, this morning is probably the first time I've played slide actually I played slide guitar a little bit when I got my resonator but I've hardly been playing slide guitar lately so it's feeling a little bit foreign and out of tune and stuff but anyway hopefully you'll bear with me and you'll play it better than what I'm doing um so that's one lick that you might want to uh, think about adding in there but really it's these that and those, those licks would probably be enough if you intersperse them, right, which is more or less what I'm doing for the whole tune. So you, once you've got, get used to incorporating some of those little slide ideas in there, along with the, um, the, that's the main part. Now there are a couple of little, the, the first solo I think is worth uh, taking a look at as well, which is, So it's nine 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 seven four nine seven four four. Twelve. Fifteen. Just after fifteen. And then that's that bit where there's the five bar solo. That's the melody for that. Again, you know, I'm not going to try and count it all out for you. Just listen to it or make up your own solo. That's totally cool as well. But if you want to cop the, the, the original one down from, from uh, Keith there. It's not a particularly tricky one. Um, and the other important one will be the, the, the very end uh, where it, it, you're playing over the chorus riff. This is that end solo that goes over while the other guitar is up on the fifth fret. Where are we? 15, 17, 18, 16, then six, second string, 16, 14, 16, then uh, to the 16th fret on the third string. Then, classic kind of blues lick here. This is the seventh fret, ninth fret on the second string, and then ninth fret on the thinner string. This is the ninth fret on the second string. Pick, slide, eight, six, 
So that's like very, very roughly what's going on here. I would expect that if with a little bit of practice, you'd play it probably better than me. Like I said, I am feeling well rusty on my slide guitar chops, which is one of the reasons I've chosen this song. I'm actually doing this song for one of my workshops very soon. So I figured that uh, I'd make a lesson while I'm transcribing it all for the workshop. So those of you that are coming on the workshop, make sure you give this a good bit of practice. The key thing with slide guitar is getting it in tune. Okay, something that comes with practice. Like I said, I'm, when I'm feeling rusty on slide guitar, it's rusty in my intonation, which is how in tune I'm getting. And it's slightly rusty as well on letting open strings ring out and that kind of thing. It is just a practice thing. Do go and watch that video if you haven't done it on the, the, the introduction to slide thing where you learn about muting the strings that you're not playing. If you don't do that, slide guitar is always going to be very, very difficult to make it sound good. L learning to do the muting with the fingers, I think, makes the hugest difference when it comes to learning slide guitar. But that said, this tune is harmonically very simple. It's a great one for exploring slide guitar parts and just having to go like, well, most of it I can kind of play with my fingers and just experiment. See if you can find a few licks of your own, have a listen to the original recording and see if there are any bits that pick your ears, that you, uh, prick up your ears that you go, oh, oh, I like that little lick. So then you try and steal that one and incorporate it into your own playing as well. It really is loads and loads of fun to get into the weave in. If you can find a jam buddy, that's obviously going to be the best thing. If you can have two guitar players playing this part at the same time and exploring how it weaves together and trying to play off of each other a little bit the way that Keith and Ronnie do or Keith and Mick Taylor did back in the day or Keith and Brian, although the, the weaving thing wasn't quite as apparent back in the early days of the Stones, I don't think. Anyway, uh, yeah, really hope you enjoyed this. What other Rolling Stones songs would you like me to do? Let me know in the description. I'm having a bit of a binge on the Stones at the moment, so for sure some more Stones songs are going to be coming your way very soon. Have yourselves a fantastic day, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>